Vladis, what's up, man? Hello. This is Vlad. How are you? Good, to, good to meet you, man. Hello, Vlad. A pleasure. Pleasure to meet you, man. Finally. How how you doing, man? I know you were talking about it briefly, but I heard you got in a was it a bike accident? What happened exactly? Uh, yeah, I got a bicycle and a car ran a stop sign, smashed into me, and then drove away. I landed on my back, like I smashed into the car, rolled off it, landed on my back on the ground. I you know I thought I'd broken something, but I went to go get X-rays and no broken bones or anything. Just got banged up a bit, but I'll be good to go. I just got some stitches in my elbow, but other than that. I'm okay. Uh, thank goodness, man. I'm grateful. You bless, man. Uh, make sure you know. Make sure you stay safe, man. It's a crazy time yeah. right now. Oh man, it is crazy. But I was looking forward to talk to you, man, because I I watch a lot of your videos, and your story is oh, very awesome. your story is very very interesting, man. And um, I was just watching a video where you were, you were detailing how you got into uh, becoming a straw man, and basically your your parents, right? Your dad made you do it, basically originally. Yeah. I was uh, I loved playing video games. I was a total couch potato. And one day my dad said, "Okay, son, I've had enough." And he like pulled me into the gym, started training me. Uh, I freaking hated it. But after about a year, uh, he said, "Well, he said it's okay, son. You just try it for a year. If you don't like it, don't do it." So after a year, I just grew addicted. And just, uh, I, I started growing stronger than all the teachers in my school. And I was just like 13. I started at nine, but by the time I was 13, I was stronger than most adults. The gym and uh, well, do, do, you, do you do you think your dad saw like g genetically he saw the potential in you? Do you think that's what happened? I think that's part of it. I think he also just uh, didn't want me to be a total couch potato, and he, he himself loved lifting, and um, he just wanted he wanted to teach me and do something together. Was your dad strong as well? Are you, are your grandparents or something like that too? Strong, but. Um, the the strongman fascination really actually comes from my grandpa because I would go visit, you know, during this period that I was starting to lift, I would go visit my uh, grandparents' farm in Latvia. So my father was a stone sculptor there, and uh, I would help him move these rocks around the farm, and I would do all this farm work. And then I saw on TV these guys basically doing farm work for competition. I should I do that? And that's where, that's where the, it started. I just was fascinated by what is the absolute biggest thing that a human being can lift. Because, uh, you know, we don't know what numbers on a machine or numbers on a bar barbell really equate to. I really wanted to know what, what is the actual functionality of human strength. So, Kirsten, the strongman was the answer to that. Mm -hmm. So curiosity for you to get ready for your first competition, like what what was the training regimen like at that time? Oh, so uh, that, that I mean that's a complex answer uh, because I, I spent many years slowly building up my strength, slowly building my, my mobility and you know foundation. Um, but by the time I was getting ready for a strongman contest, my first strongman contest, which was. Uh, my first serious strongman contest that I did, did was in California. That was California Strongest Man. That was just, of course, I, I was uh, training with Ode Haugen, uh, a legend in the sport. And he was teaching me all the events, all the ropes of the events, so like farmers, stones, and all the tricks and leverage tips on these events. Um, so Ode Haugen, I don't know if you know who he is. He's a yeah, legend. Of course. Sport. Is it true that he told you that you weren't ready yet? Is it true that he discouraged you at first? That was an interesting story on its own. Because uh, when I first came out to California, I, I, most of my, you know, 99% of my lifting was in the gym. Occasionally I'd go out to like a river or something and start lifting stones for fun. But I never had a coach in Strongman. Um, so when I came out to California, I just knew I really want. I was 20 years old. I knew I really needed to find a coach to find people to train with and just get into it. And I called up the number for a competition in uh, Los Angeles. And uh, Ot Haugen pick up, picked up the phone. I did not know it was him. But I said, I want to compete in your competition, the LA Fitness Expo. Um, and he said, and he asked me about my strengths. And he said, uh, I told him, and he's like, oh, yeah, in his Norwegian accent, you're not, you're strong, but not quite strong enough. I'm like, well, shoot, I don't care if I win or lose, I 
just want to uh, meet these guys, network, so I could find a team to work out with. Uh, I need, I need to find a. Coach. And he said, "Oh, why did you say so? Just come over to my garage, and I'll train you." And I'm like, "Okay, great." Well, I drive over, and and um, this garage door opens, and I'm just starstruck immediately because I realize it's Odd Haugen, the guy I've been looking up to for many years and seen him on TV. And then he started training me, and I grew stronger, and. Uh, after a year of competing in other competitions, placing well in Californias, placing in nationals, amateur nationals even, next year I asked him, you know, could I compete in your competition now? No, you're not ready yet. I still you comp competing, doing better, uh, eventually placing the top uh, top ten in that uh, amateur nationals. Two years in, no, you're not ready yet. And finally, three years into. Uh, training with Owen and competing and getting experience, he says, okay, now you're ready. And that's when I won his competition, three years of Sam saying no, he finally says yes, I win his competition, I get my pro card, because that was a pro amateur show, so I, I even beat the pros at that contest. And uh, I got invited to Giants Live Iceland, which is my first international competition, against Hafthor, Bjorns on the Mountain from Game of Thrones, uh, at the time I Second world's second strongest man, and uh, Mark Felix, another legend of the sport, and I ended up uh, placing third in that competition, just barely, which got me my invite to world's strongest man, because the top three from that show went to worlds, and then the rest is history. What, go accessory. what goes through your mind when you, let's say, you're doing like a, uh, some kind of a heavy lift, a really heavy lift, right, and you like, let's say you're going for the record, or maybe not, maybe you're just in a competition, and you like, you feel like you can't lift it. Like what? What goes into your mind to, to go through with that motion? You know what I'm saying? I, I gotta go into a mode of reckless abandon. I usually like to my little brother watching on the sidelines. Like you know, I'm like me, I'm his hero. I, I have to make it through this. Gotta make him proud. Make my family proud, or, or even more so if I really need extra strength. That it's life or death. That everybody. I make up this scenario in my head that everybody's relying on me getting this lift and then uh, much more intense adrenaline kicks in than normally would if it's bigger than just my life. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like like you might just hurt yourself doing that lift? Like at what point do you just let go? You know what I mean? What, what is that breaking point for you? Exactly. It depends what competition. At World's Strongest Man, I, I'm, I put my mind in a position where I, it's, I will push my body into either the weight moves or I break. Uh, in, in lesser competitions, I don't go into that same headspace. I, I allow myself, if I feel like the weight is moving slower than what I trained it for, uh, then I'll just stop it. Mm. You're very strategic about that. It's, you know, that's, that's a very honest answer, I feel like. You're strategic about knowing when to push it to, you know, to that level. I think that was very important. You know, through all these years that played a big role. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, how much uh, wear and tear does your body go through when you're a strong man on such a professional level? You know what I mean? Like, how bad is it for your body? That's a good question because I think that strong man in general is a great way to uh, be healthy and in shape and strong. I, I think these motions are very functional if done at a reasonable level. If done at a reasonable level, this is one of the best ways to be in shape and strong and keep your bones uh, strong from getting osteoporosis later on in life. Teaches you to uh, lever your body better because, you know, just lifting barbells in the gym won't teach you how to lift stuff in real life when you have to. Strongman does that. But lifting at a professional level, really pushing the body to its absolute limits takes a big toll. Absolutely. Lifting at the level that I'm lifting at uh, over a long period of time, it, it's tough on the body. It's very tough. I, I've gone through, I've torn my uh, quad, I've torn my left lat, torn my uh, pec, my bicep, uh, I've got nerve damage on my neck that's shut down my right arm that I've had to heal from. So it's, it's been very, one of the biggest aspects of getting good at the sport is learning to rehab the body and to prevent injury. And like I said, that's where the bodybuilding comes in. Because I pull back from all the heavy lifting and just focus on whatever weaknesses or imbalances I might have for a few months, so that later when I compete again, I don't get injured. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, do you worry at all, like after you retire, you know, in the future, like what you know, what kind of toll will take on your body? Because you see some bodybuilders, and they, you know, they go through a very rough time after they retire. Like they completely, you know, they they they, they destroy their joints sometimes. You know, and, and the, it's just a lot of a lot of problems for health complications. You know what I mean? Do you ever worry about that? Um, sometimes, oh, of course, it's um, it's a possibility. I do everything I can to completely avoid that. I mean, tears are not no issue. My all all, all of my tears, the muscle tears, I've been able to fully recover from. It's more like cartilage degeneration, ligament de degeneration that I worry about. So, to to avoid that, I, I do something. Most bodybuilders, unfortunately, don't work their functionality. I think all of their injuries are avoidable. They don't work full range motions. They don't work their mobility as much as they should, and they don't balance their strengths as much as they should. Um, some do, and those guys stay healthy. So my plan is that uh, to compete until I'm 35 at most, and stop and focus fully on health. And uh, believe that if I. As long as I keep the pace I'm at, I'll be completely fine. Mm. Do you have to take a lot of time to recover? Like, let's say after a competition, do you take uh, many days off? Or how does that work to really bring your body back to normal? Um, that, the, the, the two weeks after a big competition are very rough. Uh, I, I, this, you know, I just got hit by a car. It, it feels very similar. It's very, yeah, I, I was like, wow, this is a... The day after I got hit by the car, I'm like, wow, this, this is a familiar sensation. Where have I felt this before? Oh, yeah, world's strongest man. Um, so for and it, it's tough because I, I build up so much mentally and physically for these competitions. The week after, I, my body's a wreck. I can't really lift. Um, I get depressed, too, for about a week. It really gets – because it's like I, I – I, do this big competition that my mind was tunnel visioned on, and then for about a week afterwards, I'm like, now what? You know, my whole purpose of life was that competition. Now it's over. Now what? But after a week, my body starts feeling better. I start moving again, and then I'm, I feel much better. I start lifting light again, and I, my joy comes back.